Hey, it's Kurt at the Top Corner Hockey Studios. Thanks for watching. Well, Hank and Dank are retiring. They waited until three games before the end of the regular season to announce their retirement, and I'm cool with that. Going into the season, into the 2017-18 season, their contracts were expiring. They were coming off a pretty brutal year, and the Canucks are no good in 2017-18, so it is time for them to retire, and I'm totally good with that. In fact, I'm good with their timing as well. I don't think that uh, a lot of players need that farewell tour. In fact, it kind of bugs me. Like in baseball, when guys announce that this is their last season, they go around, they get gifts from all the teams. Uh, I, I really don't like that. It seems kind of selfish to me, but uh, I like the way the Sedins did it. I like that they waited until the end of the regular season. They give their fans a couple of home games where they can uh, celebrate the two of them, have their great careers, and there's no question both uh, Henrik and Daniel Sedin will be in the Hockey Hall of Fame in three years from now. They both had really good careers. There's a couple of things to look at when you're reviewing the careers of Hank and Dank. The first thing that comes to mind is how well they played together. I mean, the two of them were just a perfect match on and off the ice. Obviously, I'm not going for puns or anything here. They were really in sync on the ice together. They played well together, both uh, in Vancouver and then internationally with Team Sweden. They were terrific to watch. They were a treat to watch. And uh, I think that people will think of them as two of the greatest Vancouver Canucks of all time. When you talk about the greatest Canucks of all time, to me, I say it's Pavel Bure. Uh, Pavel Bure was such a treat to watch. He was so fast. He had such a great shot. He was a fabulous individual player for Vancouver during the 90s. I know a lot of people will say that it's Marcus Naslin. Some people are still in the uh, Trevor Linden fan club. But a lot of people today believe that uh, either Henrik and, or Daniel Sedin are the greatest Vancouver Canucks of all time. Just like themselves personally, their individual statistics are almost identical over the years. They are certainly two of the better players to never win a Stanley Cup whenever those conversations arise. The other thing to think about, at least what I think about, about the Sedins, is how they relate in family scoring. This is a neat little thing when you're talking about hockey history. A lot of families, a lot of bloodlines over the years. Where do the Sedins rank? Well, right now, the Hull family is the highest scoring family in NHL history, with Hall of Famers Bobby, with his son Brett, and Bobby's brother Dennis, the three of them combining for nearly 3,000 NHL points. After them, you've got the Sutter family, of course, the famous six brothers from Viking, Alberta. Three of their sons have come into the NHL, although Brandon is the only one who really has carved out an NHL career. So those nine Sutters combined have not outscored the three Hulls, and they're second in NHL bloodline scoring. After the Sutters, you've got the Gretzky boys. Of course, Wayne taking up the bulk of that scoring with his brother Brett scoring four NHL points. But it's kind of cheap, I guess, but it still counts. Two of them combined scoring close to 2,900 points. Fourth highest scoring family in NHL history is the Stasny brothers and their sons. Of course, Peter, Anton, and Marion in the 80s with the uh, Quebec Nordiques had some good seasons there. And now more currently, you've got Paul and Jan Stasny. With Paul still contributing in the NHL, the Stasny family scoring will continue to increase. Perhaps we'll get up into the top three at some point, but right now they're fourth. The fifth highest scoring family in NHL history is the Howe family. Of course, Gordy Howe, 1,850 NHL points. His brother Vic contributed seven to the family cause. And then Gordy's two sons, Mark and Marty. Mark went into the Hall of Fame on his own as a Hall of Fame defenseman. That family is the fifth highest scoring family in NHL history. And then you've got the two Sedins, Henrik and Daniel. For many years, when I lived in Alberta, there were guys there that used to just call them Hank and Dank. And I just have continued to call them that for all these years after that. All right, Canucks fans, or just hockey fans in general, are you going to be sad to see the Sedin twins go? It certainly is going to create a lot of cap room for the Vancouver Canucks in years to come, and they're going to appreciate that, that's for sure. But it comes at a big cost. Yes, the Sedin's offensive production has decreased. They had a nice rebound season in 2017-18 from 16-17, so it's nice for them to go out like this. They have their individual awards. They've got great personal achievements to go without the Stanley Cup, but they came close in 2011 
Still, I think they're both Hall of Famers. And I think that the league will miss the two of them. They, create, they created great poetry on the ice together. They were a lot of fun to watch. Not as fun as Pavel Bure was to watch. Still, a lot of fun to watch. What are your outgoing thoughts on the Sedin Twins retiring from the NHL? Do you think they are the two greatest Canucks of all time? Is one better than the other? Like I said, their stats are almost identical. Please continue to like and subscribe. I'm Kurt. This is Top Corner Hockey. Thanks for watching. See you next time.